Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The patient has uh, had orthodontic treatment and congenitally missing lateral incisor. One of the things that is most important when you're fabricating this type of a bridge is that you are encroaching on the lingual space of the central incisors. So care must be taken that there's enough clearance on the lingual of uh, the anterior teeth. In wearing a temporary appliance, a flipper, uh, very often the gingival tissue grows up over the lingual surface. So we're going to have to start out by reducing this gingival tissue on the cuspid and perhaps a little bit on the central incisor before we survey uh, the anterior teeth. The appliance will draw from the incisal and the pontic will be out on the labial surface so that the case cannot be inserted from the lingual but must be inserted from the incisal. So there has to be draw on these portions of the of the uh, preparation. Now this is the situation on the patient. You can see the way the soft tissue has grown up over this cuspid and we need a little more length there. We've penciled the outline of the where the casting is going to cover the tooth on the lingual surface. You'll notice on the central incisor that we are going to uh, keep the casting short of the incisal edge and we're going to wrap around interproximally, we may have to reduce the interproximal just a little bit in this area. The lower incisor is hitting in this area here. Open now, please. We are going to take just a little bit off of the lower incisor to make room for the casting on this maxillary area here. Close again. Uh, on the cuspid, we are going to keep the casting away from the centric stop on the incisal edge. Okay, now we're going to reduce this corner just a bit. That shouldn't hurt you at all, you just feel it's rubbing around on it. The impression was taken with a polyvinyl siloxane. This impression material is a very accurate, stable impression material where you can pour several models with the same kind of accuracy. Uh, this impression now will be examined. We have recorded the details of the two teeth where we are going to fabricate the bridge. This impression now will be dried and a stone model will be made from this. We've taken the maxillary and mandibular impression. We've taken a shade. We now will they check the occlusion and it looks as if we will be able to hand articulate these models to give us the proper occlusion. We already have the models mounted uh, from the study models. Now we will send this to the laboratory and have the patient return when we have a case to try in to check the fit and the shade. We're looking at the patient one week after we've taken the impression and one week after the electrosurgery. You can see how nicely the tissue is healed around the cusp of where the electrosurgery was performed. The purpose of this appointment is to try the framework and the porcelain. You'll note that the Framework has little projections that fit up over the incisal edge. This is to make sure that this is not seated too far. It acts as a guide when you are cementing and trying this in. Now as we look at this, we are going to make some shade modifications. The purpose of this appointment is to check that 
before the metal is etched. And as we compare the lateral incisor on the right side and on the left side, we are going to add just a little bit more porcelain up at the ridge area and change the value slightly. We will do that and then return with the framework etched for the next appointment where we will cement the bridge. Uh, the patient has returned for the cementation appointment. In order to cement the etched metal resin bounded bridge, uh, it's imperative that we use a rubber dam and that these teeth are isolated. So we have placed a rubber dam, ligated the two abutment teeth, and if you'll note, ligated them so that we have the entire crown exposed so this will be etched. Before the etching procedure, it also is important that we clean these two abutment teeth with a frothy paste. The type of paste to be used is one that does not have flavoring or oils, uh, and so just pumice and water is used to do the initial profi on these two teeth. Okay. Okay, it's important when you have a try-in after the case is etched uh, to make sure the teeth are clean and dry. If the bridge should get contaminated, it needs to be cleaned in alcohol and ultrasonic cleaner. We are going to try this in to make sure that the case uh, seats all the way. And as you can see, there are metal fingers going up over the inside ledge. That uh, helps seat the case when we're cementing it. Okay, now we are going to etch the enamel of these abutment teeth using phosphoric acid. And we're going to place them on the lingual surface and out into the interproximal where the composite will be resting. And this is to be left on for a minute so we get a complete etch. This is another reason why it's important to have a rubber dam on because this is irritating to the patient and the patient gum tissue. Now at this point, we examine the enamel. And if the enamel has a dull appearance, as you see here, then you have a sufficient etch. If you note that it has still some areas that are unetched, then uh, it's important to go back and re-etch that. Uh, if you should have to uh, rinse this in alcohol or clean it in ultrasonic cleaner, it's best to use a vacuum to dry it. And this should be dried for about a minute with the vacuum. If you're using air, water can come out of the air syringe and uh, give you a problem in the etching itself. Even though the etching looks dry, uh, since there is some depth to the etching, it still may be wet way underneath. So you need to do this for at least a minute to make sure that the, the metal is completely dry. The bonding agent is mixed first and applied to the etched surface of the bridge. The surface is then blown with air and the comp span cement is mixed when 20 seconds have elapsed. During the mixing, the operator applies a bonding agent to the etched teeth and blows off the excess. The assistant applies the mixed comp span to the bridge and it is seated. This should all take place within 90 seconds from the start of the mix. Okay. Now once it goes to place, you need to push it down and hold it with a little pressure. The rubber dam has been removed so that we can have better access to removal of the cement. You notice that the fingers that we have for seating are still in place. 
These have been thinned in the areas near the casting framework so that we will go through this with a carbide burr and remove the fingers and, and also remove some of the, uh, uh, the cement. Should be able to pull this off. It'll be adhering slightly. There we got it. We may have a slight interference on the mesial portion of the metal on the cuspid. Okay, close your teeth together, Penny. Tap up and down. Okay, and grind around to left and right. And come on forward, way forward. Back again now. Up and down again. Up and down. Okay, that's good. Okay, we have a little interference in this area here on the knees of the cuspid. And uh, we will relieve that so that uh, the patient is contacting on all anterior teeth. We've not, we've not violated the concavity of the anterior teeth. And then we will let her go and have her back in about a week for a recall to see how she's cleaning under the bridge. And to take some photographs after the teeth pick up moisture again. The patient has been wearing her bridge for a week, and now we'll take a close-up look at the, the bridge. The teeth that were dehydrated have now picked up moisture, and so we find that the abutment teeth and the porous symponic uh, match more naturally. We notice that we do not have graying at the incisal, as you might have when the ordinary comspan cement is, is used. Uh, she is also taking good care of this. She's doing a good job in brushing, and so the tissue looks good and healthy. Now you can see how we've kept the metal away from the incisal edge on the central incisor and on the cuspid. Also, the margin is slightly above the soft tissue. It's a little hard to tell. Slightly above the soft tissue on the central incisor. And just at, because of the gingival, the uh, electrosurgery that we performed on the gingival tissue of the cuspid is just at the crest of the gingival tissue. This also has been designed so that we have embrasures that are open so that she can thread floss under the pontic area. We have polished the areas where the little struts were sticking out in the central incisor and on the cuspid and we are using a chrome nickel polishing wheel used for polishing partial dentures and then the shofu metal polishing kit to apply a luster back on the, the base metal we have here. We've used a material called Comspan and you notice that the last time we used a scalpel to remove the opaque Comspan because it'll make a white line if it's not removed completely uh, in these areas. Now from the side, you can see the little portion extension going to the cuspid, but from the front, you cannot see that bridging. And it has a very natural uh, appearance. Now can you bring it? Now uh, when she goes into working, right working, okay, bring your jaw out sideways now. Keep it going out. She rides up on the cuspid, okay, back again. And when she returns, she, it, this secludes on the cuspid, so this is, guiding. However, she's not hitting the bridge or the framework in this area. Okay, come out again, this way, sideways again. And she's also disocluding and not hitting the, the lateral incisor. Okay, back again. We have tried to maintain the concavity on the linguals of the central incisors so that when she goes into protrusive, she guides the same way as her other teeth. Now, if you bring your jaw just straight forward where my finger is, just keep on going straight out, back, okay. And she rides on the other central incisor so that the guidance is not on the, the framework. Come on forward again, way out, that's it, back again. And so, this type of uh, occlusion, this type of design, will give us the greatest longevity as far as occlusion and designing the embrasure so that this is open so she can get 
floss in and clean with super floss will give us the greatest amount of longevity for this type of a bridge. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.